Today we're going to show you how to place an appropriate matrix and how to hold the matrix when you are restoring the tooth. Note that I've got three different matrices here. This one's too long. This one's too long partly because it's waste, but another reason it's too long is if you actually were to wrap this into this area, look at how much extra you have. You don't need to wrap this tooth three times around. If this is on a real patient, this is sticking out. This is catching on their lip, catching on the rubber dam. It's just in your way for the most part. So a little shorter, 20 to 25 millimeters is what we had said in lecture. There's kind of a natural curve to these, so you may as well just take advantage of that. When you're working on a stone block, make sure you kind of half it about there. You're gonna to have to stack your wedges. Doesn't really matter which direction that one on the bottom is going. All you're doing is stacking. <laughs> These things fly, you guys. <laughs> yes, they do. All right. You know what? I may be better just to use my fingers in this case. Stack again. And then now this last one, I'm getting up to that point where I would actually be on a real patient that had gingiva and bone and all that. So now this last one actually has to be in the correct orientation. I'm gonna really push it in there and make sure that it's adapting the matrix to the tooth. The other thing I'm gonna check is make sure that I can't pull that out. Why is this important? When it comes time to do this on a real patient, what do you have to do? You have to etch, you have to concepsis, you have to prime and bond. If you bring your big suction in here and this isn't tacked down, it's just gonna suck it right out. Then you're starting over again. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty confident about the way those wedges are and that this is stable. So now I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to place my composite. When I do that, because I have a lingual approach here, I'm going to hold my finger against that facial with that matrix. What does that do? It prevents me when I put this composite in from just coming right straight out the facial. It makes a real nice embrasure as well. That matrix is already creating my facial embrasure. If I'm lucky, I maybe have a couple of little bits of flash to clean off there and I shouldn't have to do much more. Because this is so tiny and incipient, I should be able to just bulk fill this. Notice that Dr. Haslin's putting the composite gun as close to the prep as possible and using the back pressure of the composite to fill the entire prep. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure I adapt that in there. Maybe grab a little bit of this extra here. Use my flat bladed instrument to really make sure it really got into my prep. At this point, I'm going to try and clean off some of the flash, the excess I don't need. Remember when I told you not to rush on this, this makes a big difference. I can also use a thinner bladed instrument as well. And I can actually start creating just a little bit of my embrasure. Remember that you, one of the places you tend to get a lot of flash is at that incisal edge. When it comes time to cure, what I can do, and this is where we talk about having a friend to help you, I can just lightly pull this around and sometimes you can push back on it just a little bit so you can get that bulk. This is when I would tell my friend, hey, hit this with the light. At this, but re recall and, and remember, I have not moved my finger on the facial at all. So this is the point where I would cure, which we don't have a curing light. So let's pretend I've cured that. At the point that I'm done, of course my wedges come out. this is going to pull or not or if it'll stay there it might since it's not hard a lot of you have asked me why it sticks try not to move this around a ton when it hasn't been cured yet because yes look see how that's sticking it's pulling away from it so had I cured this and now of course I would have a nice little overhang here you can all see that actually on the camera if I cure that it won't stick anymore but in this point, in this case, it's going to stick. So I'm gonna try and see if I can whip that out of there as quickly as I can. The more you move that matrix band around, the more you're going to have stickiness. So right. it's, as we talk about the time crappiness continuum, mess with it a little bit, but don't mess with it too much. Okay, let's pretend you have a ton of flash here. So this is that 12 blade. When you're placing this 12 blade on, 
If it's clean, you can go ahead and click it on with your fingers. That's fine. If you've used this on a patient, by no means am I ever, ever to see you take that blade off with your fingers. At that case, it's the hemostat. And then you remove it. If I can get it off of here. This is why we don't do this live. There we go. This goes straight to the, the sharps. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay. One of the things that's one of our, our biggest pet peeves is if we come over and your whole area is messy, I kind of want to know where that scalpel blade's at. There's a nice little area right here in your composite kit that that blade can sit in there safely and no one's going to get stuck with it, hopefully. Okay, so how would I use the blade? I know some of you have had the opportunity to already play with this. And this works for class twos as well. But say I do have flash here, just a nice light scratch. Remember, this is a fresh, brand new scalpel blade. This is really sharp. Again, because I didn't cure this composite. I can also use it here. Make sure you don't cut yourself. But if I've got flash caught in between right here at the facial, I can use it there as well. So not too bad. If you can look, it's kind of hard to tell and because it kind of pulled, but there, I don't have a whole bunch of extra composite coming out towards the facial because I held that band there. Keep in mind when you work on a real human being, there'll be gingiva and a lip and things that can definitely get cut with a scalpel blade. One other thing we want to show you, your finishing strips. So remember, brown, white, dark blue, light blue, in order of grit from coarsest to finest. And here's a nice little modification. You can buy strips that are thinner. We of course don't do that here. So guess what? You can find a scissors and you can cut your strips thinner. Dr. Cavill actually cut these for me yesterday. They're nearly perfect, of course. But see what he's done. He's cut one real thin and one a little thicker. Or you can cut straight down the middle. What's the advantage of this? Not stripping your contact is basically the advantage. Now in this case, obviously if you're on a stone block, I can just thread this straight through. And sometimes you can do this with patients too. But the beauty is, is now I can work right up to the base or the gingival seat without stripping my contact because it's nice and thin. You can do this in a C shape or the S shape depending on where you want the pressure to be sanding off composite or flash. Right, here's your C shape. And we have pictures of this, but here's your S shape. So in this case, this is working on the lingual. If I change the S shape around, where is that one working now? It's working on the facial.